Okay everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens when we fire a gun out of a moving vehicle backwards. If the vehicle is going the same speed as the bullet, will the bullet just drop to the ground? So I'm going to be using an XV700 Nerf gun. It shoots these little tiny yellow balls here, but it shoots them really fast. <laughs> so in order to do this, first I need to know how fast I need to be driving in order to shoot it backwards and get it to fall straight down. I have to be going the same speed as the bullet. So I'm gonna measure the speed that these balls are coming out of the gun using my high-speed camera first. Okay, so what I'll do here is just get my ruler, my trusty Home Depot ruler, not sponsored. I'll shoot it like this and see how fast it's going. Let's measure with the high-speed camera now. All right, so based on the slow motion footage, you can see the ball is actually coming out of there at around one inch per frame, which is around 55 miles per hour. So I'm gonna start off my run with trying to go 55 miles per hour, aim my gun backwards and shoot it and see if the ball just drops to the ground. Okay, now I just gotta find somewhere where I can drive at least 55 miles per hour, not hit anybody or anything and shoot a gun out the window and film it at the same time. Let's see what happens. The ball's right here. <laughs> okay, no way did I just get that in the first tries. That was literally my very first time trying this. So it was my first pass. I thought I was gonna have to try this like a hundred times to get the speeds just perfect, but I shot it right when I passed the camera. Right when I shot it, you can see it just drop down. The ball slowly falls and it bounces right in front of the camera and rolls towards it. I can't believe I actually got that. I can't believe I calculated it all perfect, shot it at just the right time on my very first try. That was awesome. <laughs> so it does work. The ball was shooting backwards at 55 miles per hour, but I was going forward at 55 miles per hour. So the ball just basically dropped straight down. That's so awesome. Okay, so you can see as the car goes by now, I'm gonna slow it down so we can look at it kind of frame by frame. So I shoot the gun and you can see what it would look like as if I just dropped it, holding it up in place right there. It starts to fall down, but then it slightly grazes the back of the window there and that knocks it up a little bit and then it just falls straight down afterward. See, it goes up again. So it barely hit the back of the window there, unfortunately. But then from there, it still doesn't have any, it has a little bit of forward momentum, probably from that graze of the window right there, but then it just falls down afterward. Okay, so does this mean if you're falling in, let's say an elevator, the elevator were falling and right before you hit the ground, you jumped upward, would you not die in the elevator crash because you jumped upward? But the problem with that is if you try to jump at 25 miles per hour, you won't be able to do it. 
Humans can only jump at around three miles per hour upward, so that means you'd still be hitting the ground at around 22 miles per hour. Now hitting the ground still at 22 miles per hour isn't actually that fast. It may actually be survivable. So surprisingly enough, whether you jump or not, it doesn't really make a difference in an elevator that's falling. In fact, in 1945, a B-25 bomber struck the Empire State Building and it severed the cables of an elevator shaft and the elevator dropped from the 75th floor and struck the bottom, but it didn't kill the only person inside, it just seriously injured them. So it is possible to survive an elevator fall, although it's not going to be from jumping upward. And the reason is because elevators actually fall pretty slow because as they're falling, they're compressing the air in front of them and the air doesn't really have anywhere to go, so it cushions the elevator as it falls. But if you're falling outdoors on something, let's say you were on something heavy and both you and the thing were falling and you were able to push off the thing that were heavy, you'd still be falling at around 130, 140 miles per hour and jumping upwards at three miles per hour isn't gonna save you. Well, that was pretty cool to see physics in action. Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.